Okay, okay, I got your comments, I got your emails, let's talk about it. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Like I said, I received several comments on various posts and videos and a few emails Regarding the phone call that the YouTube channel Thou Shalt Not Kill posted a few days ago. Now, I watched this before anyone ever told me about it. I will admit I actually got to this one first. I have an entire notepad that I keep notes on, and I jotted a lot of stuff down whenever I was listening to the phone call. I actually listened to it a few times uh, the day that it released. And then yesterday on Dago's channel, we went and listened to it again on the live stream, and I gave some comments there. I'll have the link to the live stream from yesterday on Dago's channel and the link to Rory from Thou Shall Not Kill's channel where the original audio is played in the description box, just in case you guys haven't actually heard it yet. But it seems like from all of the responses that I've gotten about it that a lot of you have. So I do have some thoughts. On, uh, on this phone call. Um, I do want to say, I think Rory is... I mean, I, I, I love the fact that he is so involved in this case that he wants to be boots on the ground and right there locally trying to get real information, but this is my thing. I'm not on board the drug train here yet, at least not when it comes to this theory, because there seems to really, if you sit back and, and take it all more than one drug theory here so I'm not on board with this drug theory this one being spoken about right here but I will say that if any of it at all happens to be true then that means that Rory is really putting himself in danger here and it seems like he's traveling alone which is scary so I hope he has a weapon or something on him honestly because if there are drugs involved and there are higher people that made calls for certain things to happen, then he's probably having to look over his shoulder every 30 seconds. I'm just saying. But when it comes to the phone call, now this guy is trying to find the king is how he puts it. And what the king is in the drug game, according to him, and what he says makes sense, it's what I know about how the drug game works anyway when it comes to hierarchy and levels, right? There's a king, there's pawns, there's what they call bishops or what I call goons and minions. Well, this guy seems to be trying to focus on the fact that the king in his scenario could be the owner of the Mad Greek restaurant. Now... This is what I mean by I feel like he's taking everything that's been talked about and kind of throwing it all together, which could mean somebody's on the right track, or it could mean that it's just the congruent theories being put all together because this person has literally heard them all at this point. We've been talking about this for a long, long time. Now, there are some strange transactions in the paperwork for the company itself that I have noticed, but... Unless you hear from me again on the very specific subject of Mad Greek, then whatever I found, I didn't personally find relevant. Somebody else might, but if you don't hear about it from me again, then, then I didn't find it important. And it seems like what we've heard about Emma and Demetrius, they could fall into that bishop category. Now, one thing that we have heard about Demetrius from Dave is that he is the kind of guy that wouldn't get his hands dirty, that he would use his money to handle his problems. So while those two things could correlate, we do not know for sure what happened in that house. Everyone that is sticking to the story that Xana was a dealer and Maddie flushed a bunch of fit down the toilet, that is some very specific information, okay? So unless you can show me proof conversations that you've had with said owners of the pills that were flushed, conversations in the phones about Xana and Maddie arguing about this, any sort of anything that can prove it, I don't want to hear it. That is very, like I mentioned, very specific responsibilities being delegated on very specific people, and there is no proof of any of that, and that is a very careless thing to be doing right now. Now, I know that I have come out with theories, and I've questioned a lot of things, but I in no way have ever had the intention of trying to put specific blame for specific things 
on a specific person and claiming it to be fact because we don't have any facts. We still to this day don't even have the simple clarity of seeing the vehicle that was actually seen on the traffic cams that is listed so many times in the PCA. We don't even have that kind of simple clarity in this case. So to then jump into the matrix of theories and just start putting literal specific delegations on people and actions, that's careless right now. It really is. This is, this is what this is right now. Four people died, one guy is in custody, and nothing that they're telling us makes any sense to why he is their guy in custody, okay? I don't care what anyone tries to say, when you sit there and you read everything and then you go back and use your actual brain and then compare it to everything else that we're being told, none of it makes sense. They've yet to show us a viable connection. Now we do have this new Strava warrant that is an athletic app where you can track your jogs and share things with people including your locations and I have not downloaded it and let me explain to you why. I know there's a couple of videos already going around about people that have downloaded the app to try to find Brian's information, and there is only one run. One run, and it is from August the 4th, I believe it was, and I was listening in on Drunk Turkey last night, and he mentioned that it was a run to, like, the Pullman police station. Let me tell you why I didn't even bother to care about what Strava could tell me right now. These warrants are months old. Okay, once those warrants are served and viable information is found, the police have the authority to go in and request that the information be removed from the company's portal. So anything that they are still allowing to be seen right now on Strava, 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 however you say it, it's probably not the legitimate real information that they got. And from what I'm understanding, none of the other victims had profiles. All of the profiles that were under their names were not actually them, and there's no viable information that is public access that is worth anything to this case on that app. They've had two months to make sure everything was deleted. You're not gonna find what you're looking for on there. You're just not. I also know there's a lot of people that seem to not understand the way that tablets and computers and the internet works in county jail. So I've asked someone who has been in both county and real prison, he was in real prison for over 10 years, I've asked them to do a little interview with me just so I can ask them some questions about how it all works because the comments are telling me that a lot of people don't get the way that the tablets work in regular jail. Now prison is a little different. The tech in prison, because prison is long term, is different. But when it comes to where Brian Koberger is right now, I have questions as to why they are requesting internet type information for Google and all those social medias. Well not all those social medias, because some of those social medias have really strange short time spans. that. June 23rd through August 1st is really strange to me, but I think at least two of them are asking from a certain date to present, and the present would be months after Brian was arrested, and a lot of people are trying to state in the comments on my videos and other things that I have been watching that he has access to all those things. Well, honey, he don't, so I'm going to do an interview with someone. Hopefully they can after they get off work today do this little interview with me and I'll have it uploaded either tonight or tomorrow gives the actual facts about how jail internet and tablets and all that stuff works but as for this phone call that Rory had I don't know I think the guy's invested in the case maybe he after seeing the stuff that's being talked about on YouTube felt like he just had a personal not a personal connection but something in his background that could maybe give some insight to something and I think maybe the guy is just trying to help by trying to create a profile of who the king could be who the bishops could be and you know but again it is very careless to sit there and state I have this information because this is my past and this is what I think you should be looking for to then putting very specific responsibilities on people for actions that were made that we have no proof of at all so that's my opinion on that. You guys asked for it. Hopefully I can get that interview done today. But until then, see y'all.